Howard said, my name is Melissa Morris and I'm running for Texas State District. I say for Senate District 13, and I am running on the platform of opportunity and access for all. District 13 is the most populous and diverse um, district in the state Senate. I'm getting notice from the back, you can't be heard, okay? It's the most populous and diverse. Sure. District in Texas, but we have not have it, had a contested election in 25 years. And that's almost as long as it's been since we've had a black woman in the state Senate. If elected, I'd be only the third. From Houston, only the second behind Robert Jordan. And so the concern is that when we have two houses of Congress, one having 31 people representing 28 million, and there's no one in there that looks like me, or there's only one other person who looks like us, um, that there are a lot of conversations that are being had about the things that affect us without us having a voice in the conversation. You know the old saying, if you don't have a seat at the table, you're probably on the menu. <laughs> if Senate District 13 has not had an election that was contested in 25 years, that means we have not had a choice in who represents us. No choice, no voice. My concern is that I believe that the left behind and forgotten communities really could be addressed with three simple prongs to the platform of opportunity and access for all. One, education. Free education should start at three years old. That way, when children get to kindergarten, they're not being socialized. Some aren't coming from the best uh, preschools in Houston, while others are coming from you know, homes and family members where curriculum has not been taught and they were playing catch up here in, in kindergarten. And then I believe that that education should continue to focus on holistic training and creating whole adults for us to release into society to belong to a world that we probably won't see. Because at this point, I believe the education system has reduced children to empirical data and that their test scores are what we measure their value on. Based on that, we pay teachers based on nine and 10 year old performance. We don't encourage teachers to be motivated and create, create cur curriculum that makes certain that children are interested in learning and continue that interest throughout their lives, going on to college and professional school and making differences in their communities. Instead, we focus so much on standardized testing as, a, as though that's the only measure of success in our society that leaves our children with a lot of data and no life skills, no compassion, no character building. I remember when I was in school, it was a part of the curriculum that you got along with other people. It was a part of the experience that you made friends, that you resolved conflicts, that's not what we're doing anymore. And then education should continue throughout adulthood, especially when, if unfortunately, someone is incarcerated, education should continue while they're incarcerated. Because how do we expect a prison to be one that reforms instead of just punishes and creates better criminals? What we want is people to pay their debts to society and move on and be a productive member of society once they're out. We do that through training, through skills training, through job opportunities, through support for the families of those who love someone who's incarcerated and the children who are left behind. Now while we're talking about incarceration, there can be no social reform without criminal justice reform. For the last 14 years of my life, my entire adult life, I have been fighting for the underserved, the least of these, and the forgotten. There are not enough resources available to people who do not have means, which means that although we have a justice system that may work, it only works for the people who can afford it. 
And so when you have a justice system that only works for the privileged and the people of means, you have a criminal injustice system. The system works. It's just broken by design. What we have to do is increase the resources for indigent defense. We have to divert people who are ill and, and addicted to places other than jail. And let's reserve jail for people that we are afraid of, the dangerous, not the sick, not the addicted, not the impoverished. I just read an article about someone who spent 34 years in jail for theft. Last week, one of my clients was offered 12 years in jail for having uh, less than a gram of crack rock. That's addiction. And since he had done it before, two or three times, he was facing 12 years. Now when we say black lives matter, when we say brown lives matter, when we say all lives matter, we're not just talking about not dying, we're talking about living well. We're talking about the quality of life. And that can only be achieved through policies that make sure that it's not safer to be black or brown or poor in Harris County than it is in Brazoria or Galveston or Montgomery. We need representation in Austin that levels the playing field for us all. Because if these social ills affects one of us, they affect us all. And the third prong is mental health. It is unfortunate that most people are diagnosed with their first um, encounter with mental illness or disorder when they're arrested. And that means that the Harris County Jail is the number one mental health facility in the state of Texas. And Brazoria County, right behind. And here we are with so many people incarcerated, and we're talking about people who are only 12% of the population making up almost 50% of the incarcerated people. And we're not even talking about people who are on probation, which I call an invitation to the penitentiary. Because one false move, and you're there. The problem is that we don't have mental health care. It's either, it's either not affordable or inaccessible. If you can't access it, you're denied it. Who do we tell these things to? How often do we see representation? We see elected officials every four or two years coming to every church and every function, and they're making all of these promises. But then, once they get the title, it's back to self-serving. It's back us, them. It's back, let's protect the people we love, and let's not worry about the others. It's my position that every Texan, every American, every person who walks these lands has access to the treasures of America. And we can only do that through fairness, compassion, and policy change. And with that, I say, if you want your voice to be heard in Austin, and so far in District 13, it has not been, then you have to change the narrative by changing the narrator. Elect someone from the people who walk with the people, who understands the consequences, intended or otherwise, of the social ills that we will not address, that are inconvenient truths down in Austin. And the reason they're inconvenient truths that are not being addressed is because there's no one there to address them. But I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to do so. I'm unbossed, I'm unbought, and I will only work for the people who vote for me or the people whose community is affected, whose communities are affected by the policies that I need to have changed. If you want to change the narrative, change the narrator with Melissa Morris, District 13, Texas City. May I answer any questions for you? Please. It's only got 45 seconds. Somebody's going to figure out that I'm taking these off my website, so you can my website later. But <laughs> We're number one in infant mortality. We're number one in uninsured children. I think we're number three in maternal deaths during pregnancy. Um, what do you think we can do at the state level to improve health care in Texas? I believe all children should be covered under health care. 
If it's not available through their parents' work or unions or private um, groups, then Medicaid and CHIPS should be provided for all children. And right now, state law does require that, but only if you go through the Attorney General and get a court order to do so. I think that should be a state mandate. People who cannot afford health care should be covered by some governmental um, program. If that's an expansion of Medicaid, if it's an expansion of CHIPS, or a maturing of CHIPS, but no Texan should be uninsured. And to piggyback on that, some of the numbers that you um, named are substantially higher in people and communities of color, especially like um, maternity uh, mortality. That's because of the lack of health care availability going into it, poverty, you know. And so I believe that every Texan should have some access to some public fund, funded care if they are not available. Question, so as we can't vote for you uh, being in six, uh, Senate District 13, what was the significance of the importance for you to be here today? Okay, because here's the thing. In Texas, we have 254 counties, but approximately 10 of them are diverse enough and progressive enough to elect people who are of the same position as I am on a lot of issues. Brazoria County, unfortunately, has not made it to the level of diversity and progression as Harris County or Dallas County or um, San Antonio, Fort Bend. And so what you have to know is when you're talking about one in 31 people representing 28 million and introducing policies that affect poor people and people of color and marginalized citizens, the LGBTQ community, that's not just Harris County, that's not District 13, that's everybody. So my plan, and the reason I didn't run for judge or something local is because I believe that it should not be safer or healthier or better for you to live in one county versus the other. I think that you should be able to know that even if you cannot, with your numbers or where you live, elect someone as progressive as your values, that there is someone near and they're still fighting for your story and they're still fighting for the things that are important to you. Because if we change the policy in Texas, we all get the benefit. So I'm here because we all need it. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you.